So this this uh, this wing of the museum has airplanes that cover the entire era, or stories that cover the entire era of American and British cooperation. Uh, so it's mostly World War II, but also the Cold War. So that's why there's a mixture of World War II aircraft and Cold War aircraft uh, as well. It's not in any, they only put it together just so it would fit. I mean, as you'll see, there's wingtips to wingtips right here. This, this, uh, lib B, this uh, B-24 Liberator bomber's wing is only inches above that of this B-52. Yeah. So they've got them wedged in um, just according to size. But there's a number of World War II aircraft in sight. There's the B-17 right here that we just walked past. That's the tail end of a P-51 Mustang. On the other side is the tail end of a P-47 Thunderbolt. There's, a, you can see a tail of a B-29 there uh, behind the Liberator. And then just behind that tail is a, another C-47. And that one actually flew in D-Day, first wave, uh, and uh, dropped paratroopers. Back towards us a little bit, up on the roof, is a B-25 uh, medium bomber, a Mitch, uh, the B-25 Mitchell. And then kind of extends out that way. So this walks all the way up along the way. There are quotes from various people along the wall, and then there's some tributes and videos to um, American service personnel who served in World War II up through the Cold War. It's quite a, quite a surprising tribute for those of us from the United States to come over here and see a entire wing, entire part of the museum dedicated to the American experience. Yeah. So now y'all can see why we brought JDK with us. <laughs> He's like, this is this, this is this, this Hopefully is this, and helpful. I'm just like, <laughs> Look at this shot right look, here. There's dude. a plane. Oh, look, another plane. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, in chat again, this is technically supposed to be a location check when we walk around, but I mean, we're here. We might as well, might do, as well look. do it, right? So if you get things like artifacting and stuff, remember, if you see like the signal start to drop, tell us what you can see on the camera. Don't just say, oh, it's it's dropped. Like that doesn't help us because of the delay. So if you if you see us walk into a location where you start to lose, it'd be like, oh, lost it right when you walked through the doorway or underneath the tail or whatever. Um, Cause you can help us out with that. Cause we are not monitoring that in real time. So just let us know if we get into a position where it looks a little bit weird to y'all or something uh, from a stream artifacting bandwidth perspective. And then also on the audio, we've got the mic here out of the wind. The microphone should be fantastic. Um, but again, this is supposed to be our technical check day where we make sure everything's working correctly. Why not technically check by walking around and uh, actually looking at stuff? So uh, yeah, if we take it up, we'll lead it around. You can see. Okay. It gets more of the jet aircraft over here. I, look at the nose of the B-52. It barely, I don't, like this building it's, is the size of a B-52. It, it's literally right up against the railing. We can go right up and you can look right down into the cockpit. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. I mean, the wing tip is right here next to us. And here's the quotes over on this side, uh, the quotes about, it actually looks like this one is really powerful here. B-17, okay, so that's from America. All these quotes are from Americans. Tossed a warthog in here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And an eagle. Yeah. And an eagle. And, uh, get on the rail and look yeah. out that one. There's a, uh, there's a U2 on the other side. There's a U2? Yeah. yeah there's a U2 on the other side. Dragon lady. Wait, there's an F111? There is. It's on the other side. Okay. Nice. Oh man, <laughs> look at the markings look on the, the side of it. Look at the markings on the side of the B-52. Yeah, all the missions. A lot of missions. I haven't had a chance to see what, what version that is yet. Um, it's it's open to the public right now, but it is a little bit quieter in here. So uh, we don't have a bunch of wind noise, eh, because we're in a building, but we also don't, there's not big crowds of people here. Now, in a couple of days, I believe on the 4th, it's gonna be they're having a massive air show here, and they expect 10,000 plus people to come. So uh, on the 4th, that's probably going to be the day when it's pretty packed. Yeah. There's a day and tomorrow, they close the time, you have to get a reservation. For today and tomorrow? Yeah, ah, okay. Yeah. So literally, Doss, you're right. It's actually look, Saber. It's about a 12-inch gap. 
<laughs> Can you get that? That's yeah. It. That's all there is. So they kind of built this around, clearly around this plane. Oh. oh, finally, I know who sits on which side. The pilot and the co-pilot seats are clearly labeled. That's right. Right, exactly. <laughs> Just in case they forgot. Yeah. Just in case they forgot what seat they were supposed to be now, in. Now, what's really cool, though, is that right above it, you have a, you have a strike eagle coming in right over the top of you. <laughs> And then, and if that's not enough, the support from the yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that'll well, clean up. And it's a 30 millimeter cannon. Mm -hmm. it's the U2s yeah. up there as well. You can see yeah. the U2 at the top. Yeah. And here's the F111 down here, Saber, that you were. Okay. Oh. And you can see through the wing, through plane. the windows of the, the C47 over there too. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's such a pretty plane. It is. Uh, and right next to it, in case anybody's wondering, right next to that is a, uh, this entire uh, crew compartment was an eject system. So this plane didn't have eje uh, ejector seats in it. The entire piece came out. And I was reading earlier today that it uh, has rockets underneath it that would fire it out. And it could actually work underwater. So it could actually, if the plane wow. went into the water, they could jettison out of the water. It had floats on it, survival gear and everything. That's pretty awesome. And then the Warthog up here, it's actually, its real name is the Thunderbolt 2, but its nickname uh, has been the Warthog for a really long time. And uh, it was meant for ground attack, uh, <laughs> built off the lessons of Vietnam, uh, meant to shoot up Soviet tanks in Europe at low altitude and low speed, 30 millimeter cannon in the nose, a titanium uh, cockpit for around the pilot, so they call it the bathtub, uh, to protect the pilot, big engines at the back, uh, turbofan engines that reduced the uh, speed of the aircraft, but actually um, made it actually more ideal for ground attack, and they're set back far so that uh, they're less susceptible to ground fire. Uh, a number of features on this thing. Um, every single flight system in the Warthog was, had redundancies. Right. So if you lost all mm -hmm. hydraulic power, you could still fly it. I, so. If I remember right, it was designed to fly with one engine, one uh, elevator and rudder, I could be shaking on that one, but, and then like half of one wing missing. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and yet there was, there was, it was almost taken out of service not too long ago, yeah. even though there's no real replacement for it. The, mm -hmm. the idea was that the F-35 uh, strike fighter in one of the, in its attack variant could do the job, um, and maybe it could, but um, not the same way. And so it's been saved, so it's continuing to fly. We've got some uh, some chat comments mm -hmm. here. Saber, let's come this way. Sure. Look. And get a nose-on shot of the 30 millimeter on the uh, uh, on the uh, A10. Right? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I can do that. So it's interesting. Um, Everybody loves the cannon. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Well, most planes fly with fuel. The A10 flies with. Brrr. It flies with brap. Yeah. <laughs> so so check this out. Somebody just somebody just pointed this out in chat. The barrel is centered, but the gun is not centered. Do you see how only the barrel on oh, the left-hand oh, side? I was zoomed in on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah is yeah. on the center line yeah. of the aircraft. Because they have to have landing, the landing gears offset. It's not the center of the, it's not the center of the whole thing. The barrel in the mm. center is actually centered. Do you see that? Mm. Oh, wow. <laughs> so the, the rotational thing is offset to one side, so the barrel that's actually firing is on the center line of the aircraft. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I've never seen that before. I've never seen that before, but I just looked at it and I was like, oh yeah. Serious props to whoever said Do you see how it's like slightly off center? Now put the left hand barrel in the center, right? Yep. Like that. That's the center line of the airplane, but the entire rotating structure isn't on the center line. Right. Yeah, yeah, you're right. That's, <laughs> That's awesome. That's cool. You can see the white stripe there denotes the center line. Yeah. And if you follow that white stripe down, the barrel on the left hand side. We're gonna we'll reprogram the zoom chat. It's a new zoom setting apparently too. Yeah, it's a little touching. Um anyways, that's cool. That's a good catch. Who who was that on the catch there? Radiag, yeah, Radiag. That was a really good catch on the A10 there. And uh, there was another thing that I wanted to point out. If you come over this way. Again, look at how they have these aircraft crammed into this structure, facility, whatever you want to call it. Look at the clearance between the 117? 111. 111. 117. Look at the clearance between the B-52 engine and the wing of the 111. <laughs> I mean, that's... It's got to be like 8 inches. JD, JDK was saying it's less than a 12 inches. It's so close. And then the back of it, it's like they had to play Tetris to get these aircraft in this building. It's a very fun, expensive game of Tetris. It's an expensive game of Tetris. 
Oh, they got a Huey in it. This this seriously is the UK version of Evergreen. It's the UK like, version. There's a, I like there's a lot of it's the same stuff here. It's a big hangar and yeah. just slammed lots of stuff in Built here. around one plane. <laughs> yeah, a big a giant, a big giant aircraft. Yeah. Yeah. Look, uh, Dap Dude said it's a good thing that the 111 has swing wings, or they yes. wouldn't be able to fit. Yeah, <laughs> accurate. Yeah, because if you stretched point. it out, it would. God. All these unfinished lines. <laughs> What's up, Mater? How you doing, dude? <sighs> That's why they have the glass wall at the balcony. Would have had to have been built after the aircraft were in. But a lot of them are hanging from the ceiling. Look at the, dude. Look at the massive carabiner looking thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's holding. It, it takes yeah. a lot to hold them in place. Yeah, and they're and look how smaller they are in the World War One yeah. aircraft. Like, <laughs> there's actually a crane hanging from the ceiling over there. It looks yeah. like that looks like some sort of gantry crane. It's like they moved them all around. The L flat strat says they moved them all around a few times. Last time they were, they were in a very different order. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We were we were told today that about three years ago they moved them around. Wow. Yeah. Gosh. And again, chat. Right now, I'm sort of I'm sort of catching up on stuff. Uh, I'm sort of catching up on stuff. Let's see here. Sorry, we got stuff to look at. Yeah, I know. We don't need you. <laughs> we don't need me. Let's get away from this. It's, just, the it's chair. just me and chat and all the planes. That's all we need. <laughs> That's all I need. That's all we need. That's it. I know what chat wants. They want zoom. They want planes. Well, not just planes. STEM content. It's not just planes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's true. Rockets. You know, all kinds of stuff. Are you feeling virtually engaged? <laughs> yeah. That's the U2 up there. Dragon Lady. You go to Duxford most years, El Flastra? Nice. And this place has the same exposure issues Evergreen does because they want the big, cute, fancy glass wall. <laughs> the cute, Everything's fancy glass wall. Well, Evergreen's tough because it's both ends. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a beautiful facility, but it's really tough to film it. Look this way for a second. Yeah, the clearance on these is ridiculous. What intonation is that? That appears to be a pipe. <laughs> well, let me read it for you. It says don't touch. The oils, so there's, it, it was oily at some point. We need to be oils in your skin to cause damage. Oh, in your skin. Oh, sorry. Never mind. Yeah. yeah. I don't know what that is. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to figure out what that is. I mean, we could probably walk down and there's probably a placard on the other side. It's a what? <laughs> It's a UFO. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Except it's not flying. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, it's an UFO. identified sitting object. <laughs> it's a UFO. <laughs> <laughs> you tell us it looked like we're This is our friend we made earlier. Oh, it's Andy. 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 Down there? No, second. he's no, one he's second. really. No, he's, yeah, there's also a piece of something from 9/11 over here too. Mm -hmm. that's oh, is that what that was? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. It's it's a section from the Super Fun. Super Thanks, fun. autocorrect. <laughs> the Super Fun. Oh, okay. No. <laughs> I haven't seen the top turret on this thing before. That's really cool. It's like a little miniature four-barrel tank turret. Yeah, it is. And it's got the rear turret on the top. It's got a couple of the bubbles where you can yep. see out. Yep. So, this imagine 15 or 20 of those bolted together, and that's the gun. All right. Did they ever, did they ever fire it? Or was it just an idea? No. Well, you had no use to the building. Right? They intercepted that at the docks. Yeah. All doing it, and it all came together to make it you wonder what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> they said it was for a pipeline. Yeah. Yeah, of course. They said it was for a pipeline. <laughs> but, uh, you know, really nobody believed that. Really weird pipeline, bullets. yeah. Gosh. Yeah, it's crazy. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Chat, we're going to continue walking around. Let's go down on the floor and walk underneath these planes. <laughs> Again, it, it looks like the equipment's working correctly. Say we're a few holes still for just a second. I'm going to look at the solo. It's, like, it's gold. pretty, but I, I don't know. Is it as good as the one at Evergreen? Uh, it, it, it really does. Over to the ledge, yeah, like, sorry, sorry. The unit. Oh, that, okay. So we'll look at other stuff, guys. Nice to get the engine in there. Nice.
Yeah, we might need to lower the uh, sensitivity on the zoom a little bit. Yeah, yeah, we can do that, dude. Yep. Hey, Chad, uh, I'm rebooting a modem right quick. Yeah, wow, that's like super zoom. Yeah. Yeah, like, it, I mean, if I'm real careful with it, it's fine, but yeah. if I'm not, it jumps pretty bad. B25 up there. Oops, that's just a tail. You can move. Yeah, let's, uh, we can reprogram the zoom real quick. It's fine. I mean, we can do it after off stream too. We'll have to get the grid on there later anyway, so. Uh, they were, uh, Chef, they were closing up the cafe at the back of the facility here, and the clanging was them putting chairs together. Yeah. So, um, give us just one second, Chad. We have a couple of, we have a couple of uh, technical stuff that we're going to try to fix right quick. Um, we are going to go AFK not for two minutes, and uh, we have to just reboot a part on the camera right quick. So give us just a second, and we will be right back. All right. Hey, Chad. Uh, I'm back now. I, I've returned. We just needed to, again, this is our day to technically check out everything and make sure all the equipment's working, make sure that, that we're working, make sure that the bandwidth's working and stuff. Um, so uh, we needed to change some settings on the camera right quick. Um, it does look like we're down a modem right now, so I'm going to have to get in touch with Unlimited IRL and ask why one of the modems doesn't seem to be coming online. Let me check it one more time because I just rebooted it again. Yeah, that other modem still is not operational. So we're running on three out of four modems on the solo right now. So that is, that is what it is. Um, <laughs> anything else that we're messing up here or, or is everything else good? I think what we're going to try to do is go walk around on the bottom of the aircraft and actually see see some of the bottoms. But uh, are y'all good? Everything's been going well so far? I do appreciate y'all hanging out. I mean, there's almost 300 people. This is like completely unannounced. It's a test. We're just <laughs> testing it. It's like, don't watch. Don't watch the stream. Um, there's all these people. I, I do appreciate your patience every time we need to go to the BRI back screen. Uh, and that sort of stuff. So let's, shall we keep walking around? Yeah. We'll get a JDK here. And, <laughs> you're bored, no, man. you're bored. All right, let's, let's go home. I'm ready to leave. I'm, I'm ready to go. <laughs> I'm go I mean, I appreciate McDonald's. the display of this SR71. There's better displays. It's like only, an evergreen. And you yeah. Can't sit in this one. Yeah, that's true. I can't sit well, in this one. Well, most people can't sit in the other one either. <laughs> I'm to be spoiled. Fair. I'm spoiled on SR71s. They're like, oh, there's an SR71 there, fair. and I'm like, can I sit on it? Hang on. Is this is this normal on this wing? Hey guys, do you know if this like this swoop here on this is that normal? The swoop on look, the look, wing. Look at the little wing, like at the end of the wing here. I never noticed that before. Can you get it from this angle? Maybe. Yeah, probably. You can, you can see it really well from this angle. Right? Yeah. Wow. I never noticed that dip before. Yeah, there's like a chat. little yeah. <laughs> look, chat. There's like a there's like a swoop down at the end of the wing. Huh. That's cool. Interesting. That's a normal wing. It That's is? a normal okay. wing. Alright, thank you for the information. Okay. Yeah. Alright, so we're sort of in the corner too close to this, so let's clear out a way and get away from that. Yeah. What's up Jason? How's it going, dude? Look at this. The engines dropped out. Mm -hmm. The engines dropped out is such a oh, cool hey, it's us. display. Hi, chat. Oh, yeah. Hey. hey. How's it going? <laughs> <laughs> oh, who did to the SR 71? <laughs> Somebody backed it into the side of the building and it no. made the wing swoop like that. No, just kidding. It's normal. Um, this is a close color. Make the compression get confused. Oh, 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 I gotcha. Yeah. So again, we're just, we're literally just walking around. Uh, this is our technical check day, just making sure that everything works. Um, where to? Yeah, yon yonder way. Just I, wherever? I, I yeah. Are y'all, uh, what are y'all doing? Are y'all walking outside or what's? Apparently they can't go that way. Oh, there's another door, yeah. I'll just take you guys over here. Let's let's go have fun with the planes, guys. Gotcha. Are we trying to get outside for a reason? Okay. 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 Cool. Um, do whatever do we want. Around with us and <laughs> let me see if she needs me. All right. Cool. So why don't you guys mosey and I'll catch up. All right. All right. Chat. We're moseying. Moseying. We're moseying here. Moseying. Um. Let's go over into the very middle of the room and just sure. see how the signal is in the middle of the room. This is a test day. So this, this is, is yes. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh, there we go. Right. It's all wild. We should make one of these in Kerbal. <laughs> you totally could. With working Bombay doors. Look at this right here, dude. Like up oh my gosh. like this. Yeah. God. Oh, yeah. Oh, Isn't that cool? Chat, chat, look, look. Oh, 
the exposure is awful. Yeah, I know. Get it so there's it's, no it's window. Not in. Well, it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, a whole, it's a whole window. Exactly. Look at that. Oh, my. Sweet. Yeah, you can do That's what we're doing. We're, we're walking around checking stuff like that right mm -hmm. now. So. Again, there's some nose art. It's hog wild. Adjusted here. Okay, there we go. Yeah. So, oh, hello. Apparently, this is the section of the super gun. Uh, I assume you can hear me because this should be funneling the audio towards you like Quite this. Quite well. Um, this oh. is. We, so instead of making this a shotgun mic, we can make it a cannon a mic. A cannon mic. Oh, wow. Actually, wow. that's really loud right yeah, here. Yeah, it's made by Rode, yeah. but you know. Oh, wow. Yeah. You're really it's, loud right now. It's very, yeah, it's, <laughs> you're, you're probably blowing out the speaker or the microphone right now. Chat, what do you think of this? You can whisper. Wait, I can, for once in my life, I can whisper and you can hear me? It's very loud whispering. This is where we'll bring these special guests who have very low voices. <laughs> So and then we should be able to hear what they're saying. We'll have you stand off to the left, and then yeah. the other person will be at the other end of the cannon barrel. I'll stand over here, and you should still be able to hear me. And then we'll have guests over here like this. <laughs> We're adults. <laughs> we are adults. It's true. Yeah. I mean, oh, all right. So anyways, y'all. Um, It's nice to see so many. The super shotgun mic works perfect. <laughs> it's like a microphone with an anti silencer on it. Um, so, uh, anyways, an issue they just needed was hit the right country. There's not like a plaque that explains anything about no, this there's, massive piece there's of really not. metal or whatever. Hmm. So, we'll see if we can learn more about that. It beats your 22 long rifle. <laughs> nice, Karen. It definitely beats a 22 long rifle. <laughs> Um, did I blow out the mic when I was doing that? Or was that sort of crazy? Rip it the me. audio is much better now. <laughs> uh, let's keep going over here. It looks like we got a Huey to walk past. But we can't sit in this one. We can't sit in this one either. <laughs> We're so spoiled. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> Even with Julia here, we probably still can't sit in this one. Oh, by the way, guys, we're walking under the wing right now. God. So, you know, that's a thing. Of the B-52. I mean, Sorry, it's I so ridiculously huge. Yeah. It's not spruce goose huge. It's not spruce goose huge. But it is still huge. But it's still huge, yeah. Nerds don't grow up, they just get more responsibilities. That is, that's <laughs> very true, actually. I don't think the super gun was rifled. No, I do not believe no. that I saw any rifling. Yeah, there, there was none. So, it's a weapon system. It's a weapon trainer. system for nice. Underneath. Cool. Dude, okay. Yeah. I didn't know. This is just something that I had never noticed before. The B-52 actually has like car wheels. It's not nose gear. It's like main wheels in the back. Oh. And if you go and look at the front. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Main wheels in the front. Yeah, two. Yeah, okay, four. Four sets. Nice. It's like four sets of wheels huh. front and back like a car instead of, uh, instead of having like, you know, the main gear in the back and then a nose wheel. Right. The nose wheel is actually another set of main gear. Huh. Hey, what's up, Aries? How's it going? Do the time schedule with the dosing for the museum? Today, no action. Today, we're doing, uh, we're just doing technical checks. But we figured we needed to share that with you. So, <laughs> B-52s, no, it is not the love shack. Uh, the B-52 was kept outdoors for years. You can see all the ripples in the bodywork from being kept outside. And look at this. Oh, Actually, yeah. Zoom. Bay 1, Bay 2, Bay 3. Look at the bays going all the way back through the middle of the aircraft all there. All the bays. And yeah, that's right. There are also wings on the uh, or wheels on the wingtips as well, flat mm -hmm. There are wheels on the wingtips out there. The B fifty two will not fit in my pocket. That really is a lot of bass. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Oh, okay, I didn't actually get a shot of those. So here's the gear out here. Yeah, there's a wingtip here. Yeah. And the fuel tank out there as well looks like. And that super gun segment looked really big when we were next to it, but yeah. now it doesn't really look very big. It's a little pipe. Next to the, <laughs> the wing of the B-52. Yeah. I'm gonna walk over there for scale. Sure. <laughs> do, 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 do. Oh wait, actually, you know what? I'm gonna keep it zoomed out so you guys get a better idea. Still walking. 
Still walking. And there. <laughs> there is. Like I said, uh, for scale, it's hard to get the scale on the camera until you put a person in the shot. And this is pretty big. It is not a small aircraft. And the wing goes even further out the edge there as well. I don't know if y'all can hear me, but I'll project at you, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so did we find anything cool? <laughs> we made new friends from Denmark. Remember I said they were from? Oh, we made more new friends. Uh, we made new yeah. friends. So we're going to go talk to them and their crew day after tomorrow. Okay. Out by the plane. And then the B-17 people will talk to when we get to France. So while we're here uh, sort of hanging out with our technical checks, DC-3 girl is walking around talking with flight <laughs> crews. People. Right? Just Accosting people. <laughs> harassing people, as it turns out. Networking. <laughs> networking. Yeah. I don't have a magic badge for it. It's networking. It's networking. <laughs> networking. Mm -hmm. yep. So she's uh, she's setting up times where we can visit the DC-3s, the C-47, and the B-17. The B-17, oh, apparently. There's nice. a B-17 There's a B-17 mm -hmm. that's going to be yes. flying from here over to... It's, it's going to be, yeah, so it's yeah. going to leave here. It'll go over to Normandy. Then it's going to Berlin for the Berlin Airlift event that a lot of them are going to in a few right. weeks. Yeah. Although that man just told me that apparently... Germany has said no. You're not flying over here for the for the Berlin oh. airlift event. They're not allowing a B-17. They're, no, they're, they're not still allowing, freedom. No, they're, they're not allowing DC-3s to go. Oh. The C-47s to go really? over there. Apparently, they said, but the organizers decide they're just going to do it anyway. So that should be interesting. <laughs> we'll follow that. Stay one tuned. And see what happens exactly? Yeah. <laughs> I thought just the B-17. Like, the Germans nope. didn't want yeah. any reminders. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I was thinking about saying that, but I'm like, right. is that space tool? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I should. <laughs> uh, don't worry, I said it for you. Okay, yeah, it's exactly. okay. Yeah, it's okay. Your guest. So last weekend, we were in Seattle, where they now have a lovely exhibit. They right. took their B-52 and put it, they made the first um, American memorial to air crews, Vietnam correct? Flyers. Vietnam flyers. Yeah. Vietnam air crews. And, and it's absolutely, if you're anywhere near Seattle, it's a free memorial, so people can go to that without going into the museum. Right. It's all That's open. the Museum of Flight? It's yeah. the Museum of Flight in Seattle. It's right behind their building, um, not their main building by the runway, but across the street. Right. But people can go to it any time. It's a memorial for, for all of the air crews. Huge. Gotcha. Yes. Well, and we'll just have to go out there at some point. Right, exactly. If only we knew someone. Right. <laughs> I'm trying to, go. Kale. Kale. Let me text somebody right quick. Those gears steer. Or they're not centered or something. Are they? No, they do look like they're turned. Yeah, don't, don't they steer? Don't they? They do. Yeah. I thought they all did. Look. Chat, the, the, the forefront, I, there's not really nose gear. The front gear on the B-52 uh, look like they steer. So if you get like straight onto it, you can see that they're turned a little bit relative to the body of the aircraft. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong, just making observations. But uh, it does look like it steers with all four front gear. So those times in Kerbal where you like accidentally forget to turn steering off and all the wheels turn, I mean, eh, maybe that's okay. <laughs> This is making me want to visit my local aircraft museum, Ike. This is the right type of influencing. Look, I don't want you to like my Instagram posts. I don't want you to buy my body shave or whatever. I want you to go to museums. That's how I influence. Please, please don't ever make a body shave. <laughs> body shave. I had to make that up on the fly, okay? I didn't have any other products. Also, like, really any kind of dash shave, because like usually you rock the stubble anyway, so wouldn't really work. They're whispering secrets, guys, so we're gonna go whisper secrets with the F4, all right? So this is an F-4, this is a Vietnam era jet, and it's awesome. It flies mostly, uh, not with aerodynamics, but just pure raw power. That's pretty much how they did it. So while they're whispering things over there, we're gonna go check out the, I mean, which one, on, on an F-4, which one really is the business end, right? Because like, yeah, you got guns and missiles up front, but I, I feel like this is really the true business end. Also, it's still got the carrier hook on it. That's pretty awesome, right here. It's the carrier hook. And then we got this. And we right here. In fact, let's get a nice view up in here. So it's gonna take a little bit to focus. There we go. So yeah. And we've got the Carrier cable hook. So it's gets skid on the ground a bunch. You know what I like about this plane? It's dripping. 
<laughs> Look at all the pads oh, yeah. on the ground. Yeah. That's how you know it's a real airplane. You know me and going to museums, you know this is a real airplane yeah. because it's dripping. Yep. This isn't a replica or a museum piece or anything. <laughs> it's a real aircraft that happens to be in a museum and it's still dripping fluids. <laughs> Another link trainer. Yeah. The link trainer. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm telling you, they saw Evergreen and they're like, let's go ahead and just make our own Evergreen. <laughs> Get Either that or Evergreen said, well, let's make our own Evergreen. These are so funny because. She's here. She might fight you. I don't know. Because people owned so many of these. My dad they actually had two friends right? that had these in their basement and then donated them to museums because they're like, what do you do with what them? What do you do with them? Because they're, yeah. You can so make it into a ride for kids. Yeah. Like you put it outside the shopping mall and the well, grocery you know, store. I do have to say, theirs is more complete than yours is. This one seems upgraded. Oh. It, well, because it's, it's, like it's, it's got the lid on it, it's got the extra step, that. it's got the little really shroud does. around it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you can't yeah. see the pipe organ. Mm -hmm. the pipe organ yeah. mm -hmm. It looks like you could actually climb into it without it falling over. Yeah. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you told me to climb into that one. I was like, no, I'm not climbing climb into this. I wasn't climbing into that. Oh, it is. Yeah. Taste that's this. Pretty much what that was. Is it taste like poison? Oh, oh, that was an F4 we were behind. It's wetting itself and it has diapers. Yeah, yeah, we were working on it. <laughs> hey, it's old. It's old, okay? It's, yeah, it is, it is. Be kind to it, it's old. <laughs> it was in Vietnam, all right? Yeah. Is that a Searman? Yep. God. Yeah. I used to go to an air park every once in a while, which is basically just like rich people that live around a, a runway. Right. Yeah. And <laughs> rich people that live around. No, it's true. Place. Like they have, they have, an air park. yeah, they have garages, garages and hangers, <laughs> like together. Yeah, it's ridiculous. And oh, yeah. there were a couple old guys there that flew steering wheels. They just buzz anybody that was like walking down the runway. <laughs> they didn't care. <laughs> they didn't care. <laughs> right over the top of you. Look at the drag chute. Yeah. There's a, there's a hole for a drag chute. So you say these things, and I've already covered them, Doss. <laughs> Most of the time you're like, oh, get a shot of that. I'm like, all right, I'll go back to that. <laughs> Chat, really, <laughs> you don't mind seeing things twice, do you? No, I mean, I'm not saying I'm not going to do it. I mean, here we go. We got a B B24, was it a J Liberator? B24, right here. This one? What is yep. this? this one. B24 Liberator. I don't yep. know which variant. Which variant? Uh, there's, I mean, yeah, I think. Are there multiples of them? Different Look up there. There's two different yeah. versions. Just that's, that's a B25 up that's there. That's a B25. So they're ah, similar. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So two very similar aircraft. Right. Yeah. yeah. The B-24. The yeah. B-24 was. a heavy bomber, medium mm -hmm. bomber. Gotcha. Here, so, Katie, what did the sign say about the B-24 being the box that the B-17 came in? Yeah, it looks like the box that the B-17 <laughs> came in. <laughs> <laughs> and in a very unstable plane to fly. Yeah. Um, what is the book? What? Really popular book a few years ago about the B-24 crew. Oh, they made. Uh, they turned it into a movie. They did turn it into a movie. No, no, that's the that's the B twenty five. Okay, I was like, yeah, that's it's... the B twenty five. That's Joseph Heller's. Gotcha. It's uh, that for. It turned into a movie too. Man. Yes. Yes. Don't chat, worry. tell us which movie. Yeah, chat. Yeah, chat. Figure that out. B twenty four. Magic Sad, sad airplane. Yeah. yeah. You know the one. Look, say, look at the tail of the B-52. Yep. It's the size of the wing. Yep. Of the... Uh, if, yeah, if, yeah, yeah, at least, at least easily. Next time I build an aircraft replica and I put a Kerbal wing <laughs> in place of the vertical stabilizer, I'm just gonna point at this video and just say, say it's real scale. It's, it's yeah. real scale. <laughs> God. Remove oh, shells he's... after each flight. Oh, is this the? I wonder if this is the little port that they uh, put ammunition in or something. <laughs> you forgot. I'm a sucker the for shells, little please. things like that. Like yeah. I'm a sucker for that. You know. I guess it's. I don't know. What does that say? Suitable for aromatics? Yeah, I, I don't really fully understand that. Um, what, somebody can, can look up the serial number for us yeah. on chat four four dash five one two two eight. That's B twenty four M. Yep. It says, it says it right there at the top line, B24M. Yeah. If not available, something will be consulted for emergency access, um, action. Yeah, for a document. Huh. Suitable for aromatics. I don't know. You can I hang up air freshener from the review mirror. It's one of those little trees. Mm. Alter it. Yes, it's actually a B24M. Yes, just so yeah. you know, there you go. There's the B24 registry. Aromatics or fuel additives. Fuel additives. Oh, I love chat. Okay. <laughs> this is where they unloaded <laughs> sunflower <laughs> seeds. <laughs> you got a cable. Unbroken. Yeah. yeah. Unbroken? Unbroken. Ah. 
I can't imagine sitting in one of those when this thing is flying. I can't imagine fitting in one of those. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to say. Yeah. 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 It's like, a, like an extra lower ball or something. Up the stove, right? I could shot yeah. out of the mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The guy who played Samwise Gamgees. Was that the same Samwise guy? Samwise Gamgees. Was it really? Yeah, the same guy. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Samwise Gamgees hanging out, hanging out of the park. That's a fantastic <laughs> movie, right? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Look at that. Delivered to the U.S. Air Force as that. Loaded to, there's like all the history of it and everything. Oh, look at that. Chat's fantastic. Yeah, they really are. Yeah. The, that, the, the ball turret is really tiny. You're not kidding about that. Um, it's uh, you'd have to be like almost in the fetal position to get inside of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, L flash strat, probably the position with the highest mortality rate, and I, I would not doubt that. I mean, I don't know that stat myself, but I would not doubt it. Um, the ball turret right. being a very dangerous position. Oh yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, and you got in there, and somebody had to pick you up. It doesn't like turn to a specific position to unload you. Were, you and you were there. Yeah. Okay, guys, I got um, the B-25 was in the movie Pearl Harbor. Probably the only good scene in the movie Pearl Harbor. <gasps> yeah. Uh-huh. Look at that. Why, why do you think I was walking over here? Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. It was in a movie, but look at this. Right. And there has to be a panel on there somewhere. Okay, yeah. that's cool. Mm-hmm. Look at this. It's like a skinned engine. It's a skin engine. <laughs> skin. No. All right, we're done. We're All right, done. we're done. Nope. Turn off the screen. <laughs> come back, come back. <laughs> no, but that's so cool to see the internal workings. I love it when artifacts are displayed this way, so you can, it's not just the skin you see on the outside, and oh, there's actually nothing in there. They removed the engines. Um, I love it when you can actually see plumbing in, in the guts of it. God. I can't even point out all the parts on that engine. I mean, I see like well, there's airflow. The, there's the doohickey. The doohickey. And then there's the, the other thingy. That, I think that's and a turbo encabulator. The, the what's call it? Yes. Yeah, and then the turbo that. encabulator the is turbo right around here. <laughs> yep. There's the lunar wane shaft in here. <laughs> there's the oil filter over there. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. yep. It's like a fram. It's also clean. Yeah, it's it's so clean. It's so clean. But it's also a little bit bumped up. Like look yeah, right here. Up, yeah. Yeah. You see where it's like dinged up in there. Yep. Parts of it don't even look like they're completely connected. Like they're they're missing a piece. If that's I can't read what that plate says, but it's an air filter. It does, no, it looks like some sort of catalytic converter on the back. Oh, it's upside down. You guys will have to flip it. Oh, so. chat. Take a screenshot and flip it. Oh, there is like a little frame oil filter over here. Now. <laughs> oh, man. Gosh. Good stuff. The blue light on the B-17 horizontal tail is a formation marker? Oh, this one right here. Light. Oh, yeah, here you go. A blue yep. light. There you go. So what is... Do, you, do we know anything about the blue light? It's well, a they, good question. They still use formation markers, or at least do, as far as, like, Desert Storm, I yeah. think. Where, like, the, it's it's not necessarily a light. I think it's, like, a, a strip now that they have where it's in a specific sort of pattern so you know what direction a plane is pointing. Now, okay. it could have been different for, for this era. Right, I don't right. know, but... Um, yeah, so it's like so you can recognize like exactly how they are, so you can position yourself uh, relative you know, to the other plane, even, right? even looks, at night operations. It looks like it's actually well, maybe there's a little. I don't know if there was supposed to be something there, but I was wondering if they were only on the tops of the wings or the tops I, of the, the think, control surfaces or whatever. I think so. But yeah, yeah, there's another one over here. That's something else we should learn more about. Yeah, there's two on yep. the top of the tail there, and I bet you there's two on the other mm-hmm. side as well. There's a flu- few along the fin spine for formations. Yeah, yep. there's blue lights there's up one. on the top. You yep. can see the bumps of the blue lights. It's like an Easter egg hunt. So if you're looking down on the aircraft mm-hmm. from, you're like flying in formation for it and it's dark, you can look down and you can still see the position and the orientation and distance because yeah. you have things you can see with the distance. And if there's not anything underneath, anybody looking up Looking up see won't it. see it. That's what I was thinking. Right. So again, I don't, I don't know that that's exactly how it works, but it seems to make sense. Yeah, and as it turns out, a lot of the stuff that they used, they used because it made sense. Yeah. So... Um, conversations about the B-25, which is, I want to go back to B-25 being part of the Mitchell raid. Because okay. the B-25 is awesome, but the B-25 is do, most do awesome. Do a little raid. It's a, do a little raid. Right. The Mitchell bomber. It's the only U.S. Air Force plane named after a person, and it's named after Billy Mitchell, okay. who was court-martialed after telling the Navy that they'd murdered the 
air crew on the Macon, wasn't it? One of the dirigibles that crashed. Billy Mitchell was a World War one pilot, a proponent of strategic and tactical air force use, and right. got himself in a tremendous amount of trouble and was court-martialed and kicked out, but they respected him so much that when they flew the B-25, they named it after him. Mm-hmm. And it's the only one, at that time it was the Army Air Corps, yeah. but yeah. the only airplane that is named after, named after a person. And, and they did fly it in the Doolittle Raid. This one is uh, painted in the same markings as uh, Joseph Heller, the guy who wrote Catch-22 right. has the TV show on Hulu right now. Right. It's painted in all those markings um, of that squadron on purpose. Wow. So, not for the TV show. Not for the TV to show. To honor him. But for the, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Right. No, they got up there. They, that came out like a couple weeks ago, didn't it? Yeah, not and They just ran up there and painted it. Really. Yeah, they did. Promotional consideration. Big ladders. <laughs> no. <laughs> right, by Hulu. It's just a little tail. Hulu. Yeah, it's <laughs> big, <laughs> long nozzles. <laughs> long nozzles. <laughs> well, and, and bringing it back to DC-3, as right. we always have to do. So the Mitchell Raid, I know it happens in my life. So the Mitchell Raid, they planned it so they could take off off of... A carrier. Right. They had US no intention Port. of coming back. Right. The, the Mitchell the raid was the bombing raid over. Doolittle raid. Right. The, the Doolittle raid. Actually, calling yes. the Mitchell raid. Doolittle raid. Doolittle raid. The Doolittle raid. A little, little bit of jet lag. But so the whole intention was that they would fly. They would land in, hopefully, in our friend's territory. In right. But they had to take off earlier than expected. So the crews ended up everywhere. And how many of them were captured? And Several. I don't know the exact number. But the Soviets ended Chap- up capturing Chavis. a few and detained some. Uh, the Japanese did capture and execute um, a couple, I think. Wow. Uh, but some people actually walked out. Uh, there was one guy we met, one of, the, one of the four, Ed Saylor, who was from the Seattle area. He told us a story of essentially walking and busing and getting help to get out and got down to India, I think. Yeah. Um, and yeah. was filmed, uh, the, uh, an embassy uh, gave them their medals. Yeah. And back home in the States, a couple weeks later, his wife was watching the newsreels. She had no idea where he was. She was in the theater. She was so in the theater. She hasn't heard from him in months. Haven't heard from months. The military just said he's off on a mission. Yeah. Yeah. We can't know where he is. And she's watching the newsreels, and she, there's the medal ceremony for these guys from the Doolittle Raid. <laughs> and there's her husband. And there's her husband. Her husband. About, <laughs> about 50 pounds thinner, she said. And uh, that's how she found out he was alive and was in the Doolittle Raid. In the yeah. movie theater. In the movie, in the movie theater. theater. So it's like back in, in, back in World the States. War II, when yeah. it was like you'd go to yeah. the movie theater well, and they'd yeah. roll the reels yep. before yep. the movie. Before the movie. Yep. the news. this was still early in the war. So yeah. this was in, we we got into the war December of 41. This was in April of 42, correct? It was the raid. was yeah. the raid. It was and the raid. So, so this was still fairly new. But Jimmy Doolittle, who was, I believe, Chad, correct me on this, I'm sure you will, but correct me on this, um, I believe he was a race car driver and a pilot. He right. was, did, I think, the first blind landing, totally IFR. I mean, he was just amazing. So he came along to lead the Doolittle raid. And... <laughs> His plane went down, and he had to find a way out. So I can't remember where he was in China, but there's this story that has been told over and over and over, and I had heard it forever about the fact that Jimmy Doolittle gets on, he gets to some place where they're flying on a military plane, and it's owned by CNAC, the Chinese National Airline. Right. And so he says, I need to get on this plane. I need to, you know, I'm Jimmy Doolittle, for God's sakes. Like, someone needs to get me back over there. Yeah. And so he goes to get on the plane, and there are over 70 women and children refugees on this DC-3. Packed and this it. thing is packed. Right. I mean, you're supposed to have 24 people on a DC-3. This thing is packed. He crawls over these people, gets up to the cockpit, and he meets the pilot, the little Chinese pilot, who has explained to him that it's quite a short runway, so when they go, Off a cliff. they have to really get going or it's not going to work out. Not gonna and work. Jimmy Doolittle was just like, okay. <laughs> so he famously had said that that was the, I believe he said the most flying he'd ever seen. Uh, yeah, no, and Falcon it was Moon Chin. Um, Falcon flying. And, and yeah, so, the pilot. So we had always heard this story. We have this gentleman come to speak at the museum, 100 years old, Chinese, the this oldest Chinese, yeah, it was the oldest Chinese commercial pilot. Right. He's the first Chinese yeah. commercial Moon Chin. Right. And he gets up on stage and he tells the story. He was the one that flew Jimmy Doolittle out. So yeah. it's one of those stories that you think was just in this, an, yeah, sure. In that an happened. overloaded yeah. DC-3 mm-hmm. off the edge of a cliff oh. yeah. in China in war conditions to get them all out. To get the yeah. refugees, to get and, refugees yeah. and him out. Incidentally, yeah. do and by the way, maybe we'll get Jimmy Doolittle out too. Yeah. So just amazing. This, this, is, this is why incredible. when they say truth is stranger than fiction, right. Yeah. they're right. <laughs> right. Because you wouldn't believe it if it didn't happen. I am so glad that y'all are along with yeah. us. Thank you. Like, keep telling stories and stuff okay, like good. that. Okay. Y'all are okay. awesome. All right. I think. I mean... <laughs> Happy to help. I appreciate that. We don't, we <laughs> don't, uh, Thank you, Saber. There, there are things that sometimes you have to confirm and yeah. sometimes confirm, and some of the stories you never know whether quite to 
trust them. Right, right, right. But when you have a 100 year old Chinese telling pilot the story, telling yeah. you, you listen to him, yeah. as and, it turns and out. It was, we did just lose uh, Dick Cole. The, oh, Dick the Cole, last, the last, the the last two little Raiders just uh, died not too long ago. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. Very sad. All right, they're going to close this up here. Yeah, gonna they are going to close it up. There's only 15 minutes left in the museum, so we're going to start moseying chat. Uh, Good test. We're not going to turn off <laughs> the stream yet, but I think it's been going pretty well. Yeah. For test. This is our test usually go. Yeah. Look at this. <laughs> here, EJ would like this. It's like ground service equipment. <laughs> yeah. Look at Oh, and it's some odd. ground service equipment and yeah, the information plate. Nice. Oh, but it's not a jeep that pulls it. It's, it's a giant track uh, it's dozer track right? without the blade on it. Is. It's the Klee uh, Track M2 tractor and M5 bomb trailer, yeah. as it says on the right informational right. plate. Uh -huh. If you're interested in the statistics on the trailer, comma bomb M5 and the serial number. Oh, very nice. The max payload. Look, Saber. It's not just the max payload. It's the max payload at 45 miles per hour. Oh, jeez, yeah. <laughs> 5,000 pounds at 45 miles per hour. I don't want to see that going, for going 45 miles per hour. Yeah. Mm, not too much. I'd like to see it go 45 miles per hour from a good distance away. <laughs> all I can see are the sweet planes, not notice any people in the shot so far. Nice. Oh, <laughs> there's a, seen all the planes yet. There's a GR3 in the background. What, what planes can we see from here while we're confirming that we should actually change locations? Well, there's the centerpiece is a Vulcan uh, nuclear bomber. That was the <laughs> kind of the version of the of the B1 uh, for the British. Uh, there's a Sunderland flying boat beyond it, which is a gigantic uh, seaborne aircraft. Just to its right, that black biplane is a swordfish biplane from the Second World War, a fantastic aircraft. And then kind of moving to its right, uh, the brown and green modeled one is a Lancaster bomber. Uh, Lancaster, excuse yep. me, British pronunciation. That was the, the big heavy bomber of the British arsenal during the Second World War. Dropped more tons of bombs than any other aircraft in the Second World War, God. just because it could hold the most. Yep. Uh, and let's see, I don't know all these. This is the original Concorde. The original Concorde, all Chad. Right, guys, by the way, there's a Concorde that I've been hiding. Yeah, by the way. Hiding a Concorde. Surprise, suddenly Concorde, like. <laughs> <laughs> right. Not just uh, the Concorde, the original Concorde. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I don't know all of these. That's okay. Uh, there's I a, see a Harrier back there. There's a Harrier back there, and next yep. to it is a Jaguar. Yep, a Harrier and a Jaguar. And, and then uh, this one with the blue and uh, white tail is a Comet. Yeah, that's yep. one. Of, that's the uh, original jet airliner. Uh, the British actually did that first, uh, more than anybody else. <gasps> And uh, a lightning uh, fighter plane yep. right down there in between. God, and then somebody an, said they saw the tail of the lightning. Yeah, tail of the lightning and uh, a couple of helicopters. <laughs> and then the big one over there is the Hastings. That's like a DC-3 on steroids. Yeah. Um, actually, like a C-54 on steroids. It's, and and that's the, that type of plane flew in the Battle of Britain, or not Battle of Britain, in the um, Berlin Airlift. Okay. As well as one of the British contributions. As um, did the Sutherland. As did the Southern, yeah, the, the Sunderland did. We think of the Berlin Airlift as being all land aircraft, but they had water. They could, so they yeah. actually they didn't use the PVY, but there were during the Berlin Airlift, there were those planes that actually flew in supplies also. And there was wow. a significant British contribution to that as well. So um, the the uh, thing here about the building that we're in is that these are all. British aircraft. They're all British aircraft. They're this, all British aircraft. This building is uh, is kind of a, a history of uh, British aviation. Uh, for viewers in America, uh, you can kind of consider this like the Udvar Hazy it is, yeah. of Britain, like with the the, the best and the the most the most important ones. And it's the same thing as the hangar we were in yesterday. Uh, these aircraft are literally wingtip to wingtip. Yeah. There's yeah. barely any clearance Tucked in, in here. It's my my favorite one in here is right in the middle next to if you that blue tail on the comet. If you come down kind of at a, a slight angle, there's a a camouflage plane with its uh, its tail is in the back. Yep. That's a tornado. That's okay. a, a jet fighter. That actual that actual aircraft flew 44 missions in the Gulf War, which was the most of any non-American aircraft in that war. That flew 44 combat missions. It's a uh, it's a little bit of everything. It yep. does it can do uh, air to air. It does a lot of air to ground. Does a lot of ground support. Uh, it actually took a leading role in blowing up Iraqi airfields in that war and took heavy ground fire um, and could take a lick and keep on ticking. So that's the tornado. It's a fantastic plane. Wow. Uh, but that particular one has a 
a great history. Like that aircraft, not that, that design of aircraft, yeah. or that model of aircraft. That actual that specific airplane. piece of equipment. Yeah, I can't point that out enough. Yeah, there, there's a lot in here like that. And the swordfish over there in the corner, that black one, uh, it had the nickname the string bag during the Second World War. String bag? It's, it's, a, it's a biplane, so it's canvas, right? It's canvas covered. It could get shot up beyond belief and just be strings <laughs> kind of flopping around, and it could still come back and land. It, it played a huge role it, in attacking the Italian fleet at Toronto in 1940 sank a couple of Italian battleships. In a biplane. In a biplane, torpedoes underneath it. And and it also, yes, and it's open cockpit. Open cockpit biplane. Open and then it also, sinking battleships. And also helped sink the Bismarck out on the open sea. Oh, wow. One of its torpedoes hit the Bismarck in its only vulnerable spot, its rudder. Everything else was completely uh, wrapped in, in steel and had a big steel anti-explosion uh, anti plate. Yeah. And it hit the rudder, and the way it hit the rudder, it turned the Bismarck, which had outrun the British Navy. It was on its way to France after sinking their pride and joy, the HMS Hood. Yep. It hit its rudder, and that turned the Bismarck right back, back into, around? into the into the fleet, and the fleet caught up with it and sank it. And so, it, and it, I mean, it's a biplane. It doesn't even go 200 miles an hour. Biplane. The, yeah, it could fly so low that the guns on battleships could would shoot above. They, they couldn't, couldn't shoot they low didn't have enough. enough deflection to get yep. down to it. So what they ended up doing is they they would try to get the Bismarck anyway. They would try to keep an eye out when they were far out and start right. firing shells from the 16-inch guns into the water. Oh, to so that the water would come up and maybe knock them down. <laughs> And it, and it just didn't work. And wow. so you could shoot these things up and they could still fly. They would just keep flying. Yeah, because... And they uh, carried a torpedo. They, they carried, carried a, tor a torpedo. One torpedo. God. One torpedo off of carriers, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, so it, that's why it got the nickname the string bags because they would come back just in pieces. Uh, there's one story of one of them landing on a, on a British carrier after a battle with over 400 holes in it. 400 <laughs> holes in it. <laughs> yeah, it was wild. Yeah, so anyway, so that's the kind of stuff that's in here. There's a lot of cool stuff in here. What is the status? Okay, so... I told him I'm going to wait for Gene. Okay. So I told Doc, you're going to go back out to That's All Brother. You're Doc. I said, my three guys will be there. I'll be right behind you. Okay. But so they will be expecting you to come out. And I said, it's just low key. Just talk about the planes. Yep. So, just we love planes. Okay. My phone. You guys can head out. I'll wait here till I see Gene. We're going to walk over to that same gate that we've been going out. Yep. And we're just going to beeline straight to That's All Brother. Yeah, we're going to go back right. around this way, guys. Well, while we're going, chat, we're actually going to walk with JD Key and we'll walk through this. Let us know how the signal is. We haven't tested this facility yet. But uh, as we walk, I'll read some questions. JD can talk about planes, and we're headed back out to the air to the to the flight Sounds line good. to go see. That's all, brother. Meet you out there. <laughs> uh, this this airplane right up here hanging and is, copy a, is a mosquito, and uh, it had the distinction until 1943 of being the fastest airplane in the Royal Air Force, faster than the Spitfires and the Hurricanes. It's a twin engine, uh, multi-use, made almost entirely of wood. So it was light, it was fast, uh, it could be used as a night fighter, it could be used as a medium bomber. Uh, one of the most versatile planes in the Allied arsenal for the entire war. Uh, and this is a beautiful uh, example. You can see it just kind of looks mean. So, and then this, here's the big Lancaster bomber down here. And you can see the wingspan, if you get a good shot of this. The wingspan is massive. I mean, this is the one that makes the, F, the uh, B-17 look a little bit small. Funny story about this one. If you were a, if you were a bombardier in the front, um, you couldn't get any heat in this aircraft. All the heat, the way it worked, it ended up blowing all out into the pilots. And the pilots sometimes would get so warm, they would pull their jackets over, pull them out because they got so warm. Meanwhile, just below them, just feet away, guys would just be freezing because the, the heat just didn't distribute very well. So yeah, this thing could hold tons of bombs. Saber, look at the... Uh... Look at the map right there. Oh, oh. <laughs> Look at how it has the, the aircraft slammed into this hangar. <laughs> You'll see that, chat? <sighs> oh. So we continue to walk, and we are uh, headed back out to the, uh, to the flight line to yeah. go visit uh, That's All Brother. Look at the back of the uh, Vulcan there. That's a cool looking plane. It is, isn't it, isn't it though? I mean, the wingspan from tip to tip yeah. is just massive. It's a very cool looking plane. It's like, it's a Delta Zen, not quite a flying wing, because it's got a nose on it, but. but uh, it, it looks like a giant flying triangle yeah. from the top. Yeah. Look and the, this is the Sunderland flying boat. <laughs> Look at this. This is the Sunderland flying boat. Uh, wow. An absolutely massive machine. 
Um, this is like the PBY on steroids. It is, it is, and it's heavily armed, right? Yeah. At least, or at least heavily for it up yeah. front. Um, long range, it does similar work to the, to the PBY. Uh, long range reconnaissance, it could also uh, carry weapons and troops. Yep, um, like a bubble on top, like an observation bubble. Uh-huh, yep, <laughs> yep, yeah, it's a big bird. It's still amazing how they have all these planes jam-packed into this yeah. hangar. And then this is the Hastings, which is a gigantic transport aircraft. Flew in the uh, Berlin airlift. Um, the, the fastest plane once it was up in the air, but it had a reputation among pilots of being really hard to maneuver on the ground. Okay. Um, kind of a pig to, to get up in the air, but once it was in the air, its speed was amazing. Wow. Yeah. That's a big bird. I almost, I almost need to put that next to DC-3 and just right, see the scale Right, and just see difference. the scale of it. Just, yeah. Like, I'm looking at it, and I'm like, oh, well, that's basically the same size. But right. I bet you if you put them side by side that that would not be true. Thanks, sir. All right. Let's oh, what's he zooming in on? Oh, oh rocket. Uh, rocket engines. <laughs> Sorry. Doss, I'm going to let you talk about that. Brief. Brief digression there, uh, we've got a Rolls-Royce RZ-2 rocket engine. It looks like it had designed to power the Blue Streak nuclear missile, but I had to. I, I, somebody said, oh, you missed a rocket engine, you missed a rocket engine. So I had to do a beeline here and uh, hop back over to the rocket engine, the Rolls-Royce rocket engine, no less. Look at that, gratuitous zoom. Turbo power. Rocket engine, oh man, just rocket engine guts. Look at that, look at the weld right there. It's nice. It's a nice weld, chat. <laughs> okay, moving right along. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, is there an, oh, there's one. Serious lack of data plates. Oh, that's nice. Doss, you're just sort of staring at it lovingly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're walking and talking nuts. Oh. Okay, another engine. Out of, out of this. Display, of course, DOS goes right for the rocket engine. <laughs> Is this chat saying this? Yes. Um, there was a question about the Berlin event, and yes, several of the DC-3s actually will be going on to the Berlin airlift event, which is a huge thing also. Um, 70th anniversary, 70th the, anniversary of the end of the Berlin airlift. And an absolutely incredible feat. So yes, if you don't know about the Berlin airlift, you should, amazing book called The Candy Bomber, read it. That's Just it. Read it. Okay. Right. Well, and if you want to, if you want a vision of C-47s landing every 30 seconds, that happened in yeah. the Berlin airlift for a year. Oh, the Hastings. <laughs> Doss is really excited by this. I mean, you know, I'm just like... Yeah. It's a huge aircraft. It really is. I'm gonna go stand over by it. Oh yeah, Actually, go to the corner. Actually, DC-3, you should, because I yeah, don't think yeah. I can get too far from the camera. Watch how small DC girl, DC-3 girl gets as she gets closer to that. She's six, <laughs> For scale. And she's six feet tall. Wow. <laughs> 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 oh yeah, we have to go. Okay, we're going this way. We're going this way, chat. You, Hi, you are the hangar. Oh, hey guys. Hi, how's it going? <laughs> Where are we going? We're following DC three girl. I know, right? Here, you just you just want to hold it, and I'll carry no, the deck. Right? <laughs> Quite honestly, we were... watch out for the propeller. Don't hit the propeller. Watch where you're going. Oh, it's blocked yeah, it's a off. Big. It's blocked off. That's a big like six four ish. Uh, wow. That's a big bird. That's big. Was it blocked off that way? Yeah, it's blocked off. Ah, uh, okay. Does the doesn't the Hastings share a wing with the Halifax bomber? Hey, Saber's mom. Hey, Wait, is Saber's mom in chat? Oh, say hi to your mom, Saber. Let me mute my, uh, hi, mom. Mute my mic here. Wearing his coat. Well, not today, but. No, no, I'm not. I was cold today. Because he Julia really, left her coat stick. He really appreciates me taking care of him, too, so. <laughs> we appreciate you uh, letting us borrow him for yes. a while yes, here. Yes, we so. do. She didn't have a choice. She didn't have a choice. <laughs> Moms always have a choice. Oh, no. <laughs> Sorry. Oh. All right. No. Tell your mom you love her. 
I love you, Ryan. Okay, thank you. Now we can go. You're being held hostage. It is. Look, Judy found his friend again. At Cannon Point. Yeah. We're going this way, chat. I haven't been reading chat this entire time, y'all. So. I've been reading chat. Yeah, DC3 yeah. girl's been reading chat for us, so. To the right? Oh, well, it can clear out, so. Alright. Under the comet. Oh, this is that tornado I was telling you about, the one that had done 44 missions. Oh, this one? That's this That's this jet, 44 missions in Iraq. Oh, wow. Um, close ground support, and for the most part, dropping bombs on airfields that were heavily defended. Um, that was the tornado's job. Single tail, swept wing jet. Some people say it looks like a cross between an F-111 and an F-14 Tomcat. I can see that. It's kind of got the intake for the F-14 there. Uh-huh. Almost like F-15 intakes, yeah. you know, and, and it's, uh, it was a very, very accomplished uh, aircraft. It was a uh, joint European venture. Uh, the Italians, the Germans, and the British all worked together on this, and so all their air forces used it uh, and used it extensively. Uh, it was an aircraft that could pretty much do anything that you wanted it to do. So. What? Ian scolded me for not wearing sunscreen. Who did? No. Eon. Oh, well, well yeah. His commemoration stripes. Commemoration, commemoration stripes. stripes. Right, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and it's where it looks worse. And you know, I know we saw cannons yesterday, yeah. but here's yeah. some more guns. There you go. Oh, no. it's, it's, really? it's bad. What are we looking for real we fire We painted power. a commemoration stripe on our guns. Uh, yeah. That's right, <laughs> commemoration stripe. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, it was bad. It was really bad. So that was, yeah, okay. Um, I don't. Somebody's asking something? Right. I think that's what we're trying to do. <laughs> that's an intake. <laughs> now that's an intake. It looks like a hobbit hole. <laughs> that looks like the entrance into the Fortress of Solitude, actually. <laughs> uh, but that, this is part of the Vulcan um, nuclear bomber, uh, which is essentially a giant flying triangle. Yes. That's a big plane. That is a big plane. <laughs> a giant flying triangle. For scale when she's an even six foot. Yeah, That's exactly. A much ratio to work that seems better, actually. Yeah. I don't think we need Eon anymore, actually. So. We have DC3 girl for scale. Yeah, you're just saying that's about three DC girls tall. Yeah. yeah. Three. And that means 18 <laughs> feet. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, rather than six foot nine. Right. The inches. Right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nice even number. Yeah. Right, exactly. <laughs> this is a lightning. Developed one of the, an early post-war design, actually one of the uh, from the same design era as uh, the Saber Jet uh, and the MiG-15 and 17, with the the main intake on the nose and uh, swept wing design. So this was a, a British uh, development out of that uh, originally German uh, technology. Cool. Where are we going? I don't know. We're following. <laughs> we're following. We're going. We're going. We were stalling because there was a whole bunch of yeah, it was like, yeah, yeah, like a school school group or something. Gag of And uh, DC three girl was accosted by a group yesterday who all asked her, "Are you an American?" And then they just surrounded me. As if me. she was an exotic <laughs> thing. So. Stared. They surrounded me and stared. I didn't know what to do. What? The, the giant box? Yes. Oh no, this. I'm not that fascinated by the giant box, and I need to know what it is. I don't know. Oh, it's a processing pad. Oh, wow. Yeah? Yes. <laughs> All right, we've made it. The Virgin, the Virgin Atlantic. Yep. Yep. This is the one that went around the world. 
Peter Br uh, Richard Branson and Per Lindstrom made the first crossing by, of the Atlantic by hot air balloon in this capsule in July of 1987. Built by British company Thunder and Colt, both the capsule and the balloon made by them. Uh, they don't happen to have a Dornier G92, do they? Mm, no, Dornier would be a German aircraft. And no, they don't. Not that I've seen anyway. They might, maybe they might have in the flying collection. <laughs> Looks like it could use a good scrub. <laughs> yes. Yes, it could. That's really close quarters to be in. The British and American flags on either side. I remember that. I do too, yeah. 20,000 feet. 31 hours, 41 minutes. 31 hours, 41 minutes at 20,000 feet. No, too much glare there. Capsule pressurized. Wow. It's a long ways mm -hmm. with one person. I mean, there are people that I can spend a lot of time with, but that's a lot of time in a small space, not a whole lot to do. <laughs> and back in 87, they would have had to have like a VCR and lots of, lots of videotapes to watch, and I don't think that would have worked. You can only play so much cards. We didn't see that yesterday when we came through. No, well, I, I yeah. Okay, so it's 520. 520. Should we go back out to the we line? head back out because then it's going to be time. Can we get up this way? No, no, you have to go back around. I had to catch that chat, sorry. I'm not sorry. <laughs> Yeah. Briefcase guy came over and I had to catch. Oh, what a weird engine layout. Oh, wow. It's like the over and under engine layout. Yeah, yeah, that's on the Lightning. Ah, oh, that's, that's on the Lightning. That's cool. Yeah, one of its unique features. And the low, a really low stabilizer. Yeah. Low stabilizer. Wonder. Pretty, pretty big aircraft. Running sideways, I mean. Okay, this we're now is looking the into engines. Constellation? No. This comet. is on the, the comet. comet. Thank this you. Is, and this is the Comet 4. The so comet the four. first Comet was the one that had the square windows and... Lots of crashes. Yeah. And so, yeah. And, and so they had to go through major redesigns. If they got the windows right, it would have been more successful but than this. The British were the first to develop a jet airliner. Wow. That's why are the windows around it. That's yes, right. they are. Pressurized. Right. A lot of the DC-3s are not pressurized, right. Right. and so we had the square windows, didn't have that right. problem. and you build a pressurized aircraft that's going to go higher and faster, and all of a sudden your square windows don't work so well. That's right, because yeah. they, they fray, yep. and it's kind of a maze. Yeah. We just live in here. Right. We've, we've walked around on the flight line and no one's noticed. <laughs> we did. We actually had to like wave our arms to get somebody's attention to come and get us off the flight line. Yeah. I did. Yeah. We had to accost someone to remove us from it. That's all there was to it. <laughs> and then I looked at you like, well, I guess I could watch you back if it was in the baby. You guess you could? could? Ask to be removed. Exactly. <laughs> Look at the engine from the Harrier. Ah, that's cool. Look at this cute thing behind me. Oh, yeah, that goes right up to the Yeah. Projects. Yeah. Look at the. You guys are fascinated by the engine. Julie is fascinated by the little car. On by the little side. car. I mean, do you see that thing? That's adorable. There, in the back there, see? Remember, the air can only hold like 90 seconds in the water. That's right. Uh, okay. Wild. Yeah, we're kind of wrapping up here in Duxford all of a yeah, sudden. Yeah, it looks like it. Yeah. Let's go back outside and see if anything's in the air. and. Uh, Oh, really? There's that guy standing on the briefcase again. Yes, that, that's when the red arrows were going in, when the briefcase man was. Oh. The red arrows, of course, the British stunt flying team. Oh. The what? There's some light, like colored lights on the bottom. Directly in front of the entrance. I have no idea what it's going to be for. Hey, or went my sunglasses. I have no idea. Yeah, I don't know. Huh. Holy cow, okay, it's a big plane. When you get up yeah. the door? There's also like a, uh, you got my glasses? Would it be, oh, Somebody? Yeah, okay, thanks. <laughs> yeah, when you can open the door, um, like an observation thing or something there in front of it as well. 
It looks like. I don't, I don't know if that's for camera equipment or if somebody would actually look out of that. I'm not sure. What's this one's name? This is the Hastings. Hastings, okay. Hastings. Hastings, yes. Yeah, Hi, Hastings lights it. Nice, nice. I wonder okay. the Let's see how it is. Hey, what's up, guys? <laughs> hey, it's me, it's Dux. <laughs> Later, dudes. <laughs> Later, dudes. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. <laughs> it was funny. <laughs> Then you gotta do like the classic thing, like, hey, guys. look, he can impersonate me, but he'd have to slap his face to get it all red <laughs> first. <laughs> and then... <laughs> Sorry, two on the nose. Uh, those are indication You're lucky the camera is more words. expensive than my pride. Those are indication lights. If you look carefully, the P51 has them, also has them. Oh. Recognition. <laughs> yes, recognition. That's what I mean. I've seen the red arrows many times. I've worked on them. Okay. Mm -hmm. Red arrows are cool. Yeah, probably. Okay, we're just 